This is Concept E Classes and today we'll deal with Chapter 2 of Class 8 Civics Understanding Secularism. So Unit 1 of Class 8 Civics is the Indian Constitution and Secularism. We have already covered Chapter 1, the Indian Constitution in the previous video. In this video, we'll deal with Chapter 2, Understanding Secularism. So first we'll see what is secularism. And why is it important to separate religion from the state? Or why is secularism important? And finally, we'll see what is Indian secularism. Now, in order to understand secularism, imagine yourself as a Hindu or a Muslim living in a part of United States of America where Christians are the majority group. Now, even though you are a US citizen, no, is, no one is willing to rent a house to you or you'll feel a discrimination in your workplace. Now, this will make us feel very uncomfortable, right? We'll feel uh, that we are not being treated fairly. And this anger could take two forms. First, you might react saying that the Christians, they should get the same treatment to the places where Hindus and Muslims are majority. So this is a form of retaliation. Or you might take the view that there should be justice for all. You may fight stating that no one should be discriminated against on the grounds of the religious practice and belief. So this is the essence of secularism. No discrimination against anybody in the name of religion. So history provides many examples of discrimination, exclusion and persecution on the ground of religion. For example, you might have read how Jews were persecuted in Hitler's time and how several millions were killed. Similarly, in Saudi Arabia, the non-Muslims are not allowed to build a temple or a church. If they do so, they will destroy the temples or churches and they can not even gather in public place for prayers. So, in all these examples, we can see that the members of one religious community, they either persecute or discriminate against members of other religious communities. So, these acts of discrimination takes place only when one religion is given official recognition by the state at the expense of other religions. So this happens when the state favors one religion. So this is a map showing the countries with state religion. The blue color, it shows the states favoring Christianity as a religion. The green shows the states supporting Islam. Yellow shows Buddhism. So in all these cases, when a state favors one religion, these acts of discrimination takes place. Now, in India, can a state discriminate against citizens on the ground of religion? No, India is a secular nation with no state religion and therefore every citizen residing within the territory of India has the right to follow their own religion. So we saw the introduction of secularism. Now let's understand what is secularism. So in the previous chapter, we studied how the Indian constitution contains fundamental rights that protect us against state power as well as against the tyranny of majority. So if the state power favors some religion, we have fundamental rights to protect us. So the constitution, it allows the individuals the freedom to live by their religious beliefs. So keeping this in mind, the India adopted a strategy of separating the power of religion and the power of state and secularism refers to this separation of religion from the state. So we can define secularism as a principle of separation of the state from religious institution or from religion or in simple words we can say that Secularism means no discrimination against anybody in the name of religion. Now, why is it important to separate religion from the state or why is secularism important? Now, secularism is important for a country to function democratically. That is only if there is a separation of religion from the state, then only a country could function democratically. We know that Almost all countries of the world have more than one religious group living in them. And within these religious group, there will be one majority. And if this majority religious group have access to the state power, then they would discriminate and even persecute the minorities, which result in coercion and even killing of the minorities. Therefore, the tyranny of the majority and the violation of fundamental rights 
is one of the reasons why it is important to separate the state and religion in democratic societies now another reason to separate religion from the state in democratic society is because we need to protect the freedom of individuals to exit from their religion embrace another religion or have the freedom to interpret religious teachings differently so we can understand this point better by taking the practice of untouchability now you might feel that uh, you dislike this practice within hinduism therefore you want to try and reform it however if the state power were in the hands of those hindus who support untouchability will this be an easy task no if you are a part of the dominant religious group you might face a lot of resistance and you might not have the freedom to interpret this differently hence it is important to separate state and religion so we saw secularism in general now let's understand secularism in the indian context or what is indian secularism now the indian constitution mandates that the indian state be secular and according to the constitution only a secular state must ensure the following that one religious community does not dominate another that some members do not dominate other members of the same religious community and thirdly that the state does not enforce any particular religion nor take away the religious freedom of individuals now the indian state it works in various ways to prevent the above domination so let's see some of the ways first it uses a strategy of distancing itself from religion the indian state it is not ruled by a religious group nor does it support any religion for example in india the government spaces like the law courts the police stations the government schools and offices they are not supposed to display or promote any one religion so we can understand this point easily through this storyboard in a government school the students here they want to celebrate a religious festival but the teacher said that it might not be possible because being a government school we cannot give importance to one religion so what can we understand from this storyboard if the celebration of the religious festival takes place within the school then it would be a violation of the government policy so the government schools they cannot promote any one religion either in their morning prayers or through their religious celebration but this rule it's not applicable to private schools but the second way in which the indian secularism works to prevent the above domination is through the strategy of non interference This means that in order to respect the sentiments of all the religions and not interfere with the religious practices the state can make certain exceptions for particular religious communities so this point can be understood better way through this storyboard here a group of friends they have recently brought scooters and are meeting to go for a ride together so this guy he says to the sikh youth to wear a helmet or else you will be fined by the police but the sikh youth says that the indian state it recognizes that wearing a pagadi or a turban is central to a sikh religion that is it is an important part of sikh religion and in order not to interfere with this it allows an exception in the law that is a sikh while riding a bike it can wear he can wear a pagadi instead of helmet so here we can see that the state have made an exception in the law for the sikh religious community Now the third way in which the Indian secularism works to prevent the domination is through the strategy of intervention. Let's take the example of untouchability. Here the members of the same religion, the upper caste Hindus, they dominate the lower caste within it. And in order to prevent this, Indian constitution bans untouchability. So in this instance, the state is intervening in the religion in order to end this social practice of discrimination. which violates the fundamental rights as well now this intervention of state it can also be in a form of support that is the indian constitution it grants the right to religious communities to set up their own schools and colleges it also gives them financial aids on non preferential basis hence we can say that the intervention of state can also be a form of support Now let's see in what way is Indian secularism different from that of other democratic 
countries now some of the objectives that we just studied are similar to those that have been included in the constitution of secular democratic countries in other parts of the world for example in usa the first amendment of the us constitution prohibits the legislature from making laws respecting an establishment of religion or that prohibit the free exercise of religion so this establishment uh, is that the legislature it cannot declare any religion as their official religion nor they can give preference to one religion that is in usa the separation between the state and religion means neither the state nor the religion can interfere in the affairs of one another example is the pledge of allegiance in united states of america most children in government schools have to begin their school day reciting the pledge of allegiance and this pledge it includes the words under god and it was established more than 60 years ago however now it is not a legal requirement as it violates the first amendment of us constitution now it's not a legal requirement and students they do not have to recite it if it conflicts with their religious beliefs now one significant way in which the indian secularism differs from that of united states of america is that in indian secularism the state can intervene in religious affairs for example we saw how the indian constitution intervenes in hindu religious practices in order to abolish untouchability whereas in us there is no intervention the state and religion are separate and the indian constitution it also guarantees fundamental rights that are based on these secular principles so we saw how india being a secular state works in various ways to prevent religious domination and discrimination so now let's see an example where religious discrimination took place it was in france in february 2004 France passed a law banning students from wearing any religious or political signs or symbols such as a Islamic head scarf or a Jewish skull cap or large christian crosses and this law has encountered a lot of resistance from many uh, immigrants who came from former french colonies and many students were expelled from the school for wearing head scarves as well so here we can see a clear discrimination of the minority groups so that's all for this chapter understanding secularism tune in soon for the next session thank you so much may god bless you all take care and bye bye